If you own a Compaq E8 or E6 coffee grinder, then this video will show you how to change the top and bottom burrs. You'll need a few tools that are essential and a couple that will make the job quick and efficient. You'll need a crosshead screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, a Torx T20 screwdriver that looks like a star shape, a hard bristle brush, a long bristle brush, a wire brush, and a marker pen. You'll also need a pot or a jar to keep all the small elements in so you don't lose them. Close the hopper chute to prevent any more beans entering the grinding chamber. Grind out any coffee from the machine. Once the grinding chamber is empty, turn off and unplug the grinder. To remove, place your hands firmly on the hopper and lift off. You may have to twist the hopper slightly before lifting. Removing the grind collar will give you access to the burrs. Start by taking a note of your grind setting. Loosen the grind locking mechanism and turn the dial to zero. Before you use the T20 screwdriver to remove the screws, it is important to know that each screw has a washer and a rubber grommet that needs to remain on the screw. Keep all the screws in a pot or a jar so you don't lose them. Remove all three screws. Now undo the grind locking mechanism and remove the grind collar. Remove the orange rubber cover to expose the grind chamber. You will need to remove the top burr carrier by turning it clockwise. This will take quite a few turns. Remove the top burr carrier to access the grind chamber and the bottom burr. As well as the burrs, you will see a triangular shaped small metal brake shoe. It is important to mark the top of this before removing, as it needs to go back in the right place and the right side up. Once removed, place the brake shoe into the pot with your other screws. Remove any coffee grinds from the grinding chamber. Use a hoover initially to remove the bulk of the grinds. Use a flathead screwdriver to loosen grinds in and around the bottom burr screws and also in any grooves or channels and then hoover again. To remove the bottom burr, place the flathead screwdriver in between the burr and the grind chamber to prevent the burr from moving. Then use the crosshead screwdriver to undo the three screws located on the top of the burr. Use the flathead screwdriver to remove the burr by placing it into a screw hole at an angle and lift the burr from the chamber. If the burr is wedged, you can use a pair of long nose pliers to lift the burr out. Again, insert the pliers into a screw hole and lift the burr from the chamber. To remove the top burr from the top burr carrier, use the crosshead screwdriver and undo the three screws.
Once the burr is removed, clean any excess grinds from the carrier with the short bristle brush before replacing the new burr. Make sure the grind chamber is cleaned thoroughly, remove any excess grinds using the brushes, flathead screwdriver and a hoover to finish. Insert the bottom burr. Locate the screw holes and using the crosshead screwdriver replace the screws and tighten. Use a flathead screwdriver to stop the burr from spinning and make sure the burr screws are done up tightly using the crosshead screwdriver. Place the new burr on the top burr carrier. Lining up the screw holes and using the crosshead screwdriver to tighten. Now both burrs have been changed, it's time to reassemble the grinder. Before you replace the top burr, remember to replace the brake shoe in the same place and the right way up. When you replace the top burr, the carrier is designed to fit into three grooves on the side of the grind chamber. This should slide in comfortably and sit evenly before tightening. Tighten top burr carrier anti-clockwise. You should not have to force this as it could be prone to threading. Once the carrier is fully tightened, you should be able to turn the bottom burr with the flathead screwdriver. If you can't, back off the top burr carrier by turning it clockwise slightly so the bottom burr is able to turn easily. When replacing the screws back in the grind collar, you'll find a rubber grommet on the underside of each screw hole.
These are important as they help hold the orange rubber cover in the correct position. When you place the grind collar onto the top of the grinder, marry up the locking pin with the brake shoe, which is the small metal triangle, and partially tighten the collar locking pin to hold in place. Locate the screw holes and partially tighten each screw, including the locking pin. Repeat the process, tightening everything in unison to keep the grind collar level until all the screws are fully tightened. Turn the grind dial back to your original setting as a ballpark starting point, making it easier for you before you begin the dialing in process. Once the hopper is back on the grinder securely, open the hopper chute and fill the grind chamber back up with beans. Restore power to your machine by plugging it back in and turning on the power to the grinder.